by March of 2007. The Enbar Awakening had spread through so many villages and so many neighborhood watches were being set up. The Marines began to formalize the arrangements with a training program. The men of Shiabi were put through the Provisional Security Forces training program at Camp Baharia near Fallujah. I know those boys very well. Uh, a lot of those guys are prior service guys and have different experiences from their lives and, uh, and, they, and they pick up the material real well. In Fallujah, the training of the Provisional Security Forces is headed by Chief Warrant Officer Thomas Vasquez. A nine-day course roughly. It's a nine-day course. They, we do some uh, basic and entry-level um, firing with the weapons and weapon maintenance and, and uh, marksmanship and uh, basic police skills uh, and, and basic uh, tactics and self-defense stuff. Many of the tribesmen joining the PSF were previously aligned with insurgent groups. I have had all kinds of conversations with them. And, uh, and generally speaking, that's a sensitive area, that kind of conversation. Uh, yeah, we've discussed that. we discussed that with different uh, platoons at different times. Uh, I always end those conversations with uh, the truth. I mean, it's okay if once we started, you thought this and he thought that. But the thing about the truth is, no matter how you slice it and dice it, it's always going to be the truth. So given time, those that lie are the ones that have to fear. I have had uh, local nationals approach me and, and let me know directly to my face that they used to be um, Sunni insurgents. But they have realized that the real problem in Anbar province is Al-Qaeda. And they would prefer to work with the coalition forces, even though we're Americans, uh, just to get rid of Al-Qaeda. The Provisional Security Forces and Neighborhood Watches are a massive force multiplier, allowing the coalition to engage in the most effective techniques of counterinsurgency, census data collection. Identifying residents of villages is one of the most common missions in Al Anbar. The data collection ranges from old-fashioned forms augmented with digital cameras all the way to retinal scans. Well, number one, it gives you an idea who's supposed to be there. When you're able to electronically scan ten fingers all at once, you can match an iris scan up with it, uh, and you can create a database. It doesn't matter if the individual tells you that he's Billy Bob Ahmed or, or, or Charlie Dawood. It doesn't matter what name he uses. You'll be able to identify him. And, but it's very, very important to know who's supposed to be in those towns and villages. In the Malayan emergency of the 1950s, one of the keys to eliminating the communist insurgency was knowing who was supposed to be in the village, targeting people who did not belong, and keeping the insurgents out of the village. I think the most important part, and the PSF can help with this, is knowing who should be there. Uh, you know, we've talked about conducting a census in a, in a village and using forensics and biometrics to help back that up and creating a database. It's more important to know who's supposed to be there uh, than actually controlling their movement, which, which can be you know, very effective also. And I think that, that you know, they speak the language. They know, they, they know who's a member of what tribe or family. A member of the Shiabi Neighborhood Watch explained to me their procedure for preventing insurgents from getting into their village. They question him, they ask him, uh, like what the reason of his uh, visit to the area, what purpose that he came for. for. And then they, check, they check his ID card and then they uh, uh, search the vehicle. Completely. And then they, con they contact the person that he come to visit him. And we contact that person and we, we find out if he knows that the, the visitor or not. So the visitor will be under the person's responsibility. And also we ask how long he will stay uh, in this area, like the visit, how long. And also we, we, we take his uh, uh, car uh, the vehicle title and his uh, ID card to stay with us till he finished his visit and then we'll give, it, give him back all his documents as soon as he leaves. And if an Al-Qaeda terrorist tries to come into their village, the neighborhood watch has a very direct way of dealing with it. Let's say some, uh, a, a bad guy, a terrorist, comes uh, through this checkpoint. What's he going to do? If one of the Rahabians 
او المقربين عباره هاي او جعل نقطه السيطره هاي The only difference between our neighborhood watches and the concerned citizens, and unfortunately some of them we, we group them into the militia uh, definition that we give them, is nothing other than the ROE, rules of engagement. In our neighborhood watch, if you're not supposed to be there, they call 911 or they, they, they take a picture of you with the cell phone. In the Euphrates River Valley, okay, they, the Iraqis have, if, you, if you're not supposed to be there and, and uh, your, your behavior is inappropriate, they just shoot you. Iraqis, they prefer an AK-47, and, and in my neighborhood, you, you use a uh, video camera. This is why the Anbar Awakening works. The locals stand up to the criminal thugs in Al-Qaeda. You didn't see things like this in 2004 or 2005. In 2007, the Iraqis of Anbar have joined the coalition. They have awoken to the threat of Al-Qaeda.